What's up guys, Comey here, and today I'm bringing kind of a late forge, um, kind of basics. So I did this with the Splitgate series, um, just to help people understand the map editor more, and I'm going to do the same for uh, Halo. So Halo Internet's Forge is now out. It's been out for a good while. I have been working with it, and honestly, I really enjoy it. It's a huge step up from uh, Halo 5's. And uh, I guess we'll just start off right here at the Forge menu. So the Forge menu will literally be the like the last thing on the playlist. And you have a few maps to mess around with. Uh, the canvases are uh, Adrid, Institute, Myers, Seafloor, Void, and Ecliptic. Detachment and Argyle are just two 3 for 3 made Forge maps. While it's not something very important for you to really touch, you can go in, you know, take a look and understand how stuff gets thrown together. Um, but for the sake of this video, we'll just use Institute because it's very bright and you can kind of see everything clearly. So when you, as soon as you click play, you're going to name the file. Uh, I'm just going to name it video, uh, just for the sake of it. And once you name it, you'll start loading into it. Um, I'm probably going to cut it here because it's going to take a little bit to load, so I'll see you there. Alright, so once you load in, you should see all of the basic items that is necessary for whatever game mode you're playing. So we've got King of Hill points, we have Stronghold points, we have all of these, you know, pretty much everything you need just to set up, you know, uh, Slayer, Capture the Flag, every game mode under the sun. So it, even last Spartan Standing, as you can see the shrinking uh, kind of like thing here. Um, so uh, I think first of all what we should do is we should really start understanding how these controls work. Um, I'm going to fly out here for a moment. Uh, actually, you know what? Uh, we'll actually show you a few things. So when you press Y, you'll get your browser and your UI. Um, specifically, we're going to go into the folders option, and here it might be kind of like a mess, um, but these are actually all of the items that we see currently uh, on this UNSC floor. Now, say that I don't want to necessarily see all the gameplay items, and I can just completely remove them. So any spawns, any weapon spawns, any equipment you know, dispensers, I can completely toggle them out, especially for modes. So now modes are gone and I will not be able to see them. Now say if I'm looking for an item, well I can go in here and say I want to figure out which one of these two separation pins are, you know, one or the original. So I can click it and it will automatically position my camera looking at what each one would be. This comes in handy because say if I'm in gameplay and I'm trying to look for, you know, camera one or camera two, I can boom camera original and then apparently camera one is just literally inside of it. So very useful. You can also lock items this way. Uh, for the sake, I will be locking the starter floor uh, and the UNSC pins. Uh, I think I'll just go ahead and delete because we do not need them. All right. So now we have a very empty starting floor here. Um, now, say if you just want to clear it just in general and you don't want any items to begin with, um, make sure that whenever you are looking to keep an item, make sure to lock it because if you don't lock it, then it will be deleted by this method. So under map options, you literally press up and you're all the, all the way at the top in atmosphere and you'll go down to reset and delete all unlocked. Upon deleting all unlocked, you'll go back into your folders and you'll notice all the folders are now empty. This is because we deleted everything that was unlocked and you are starting from a complete clean slate. All the modes are gone. There's nothing here that you really need to worry about. All I have left is my UNSC starting floor. But you might be asking me, why am I necessarily keeping the starting floor? Well, there's a reason. And you'll see down at the bottom of my screen where it says position, um, this comes in handy because um, I, if let's probably go down the list at the kind of right side of my screen now. Um, so first of all, you have your select. Now, unlike Classic Forged, where you used to use your bumpers to go up and down, now you use your bumpers to select and deselect. So if I hit my right bumper while select uh, looking at this object, you'll notice that I have this yellow outline around it. 
this notifies me that I have officially grabbed the object and now I can maneuver this object however I want and I can do whatever I want. And if I want to deselect all or just deselect this object, I can press the right bumper again just to dele dele uh, deselect that specific object. But say if I have multiple of them, so you can see I have two of them now. Uh, say if I just want to deselect all of them, I just hit my left bumper and it just deselects each and every object I currently have done. <clears throat> Undo is very simple, or when I press it, you'll notice that this comes back. But if I don't want it there, I can just press up on my D-pad to redo, meaning that I can undo and redo each object as I wish completely, you know, whatever. I do know this is a little buggy in terms of, you know, massive objects. I've seen these rotate objects before, so do note this is kind of buggy here and there. Um, next thing would be duplicate. So as long as I'm holding an object, I have to be holding an object. Uh, oh, it's telling me that apparently I can... Oh, no, apparently it is duplicating without me. That's interesting. They're all underneath there then. Interesting, I didn't know that. So as long as you're hovering over an object, you can duplicate the object as you see there and you'll automatically be grabbing it, which is neat. I didn't know that worked. Um, quickly, I'm gonna swap this to phase because it'll come in more handy. Going down the list again, we have our delete option. So say if you have an object and you, know, you kind of like rotate it to a point you don't want it, you press left on the D-pad and just delete. Um, now next comes the sticks. So you'll notice that I kind of pick up some speed here and there, um, but this also comes in handy for more reasons. Um, so currently you'll notice that you know, my camera isn't very fast and because you know I hold it down and I kind of shift around much quicker. Um, this is because uh, you can go into your tool setting, which we will cover this later, um, which you can come down and you can select mode. So selecting mode will be normal or precision, and when you hold it down, it's boost. Um, so here you can adjust your normal speed and your precision speed, and you can even enable no clip. Uh, no clip, for most people who don't know, is that I can clip through floors and objects freely, and I won't get bumped around. But as soon as I enable that, or disable it, you'll notice I can't go through the floor. So it's like original Forge, basically. But for the sake of convenience, I will be having it on. Um, so say that I am you know, picking up an item and I want to get to point A to point B really fast, I can hold down my stick and you'll notice that you know, it's really quick. Um, but if I want more precision stuff, I can switch on precision mode, as you can see, and I can do one thing at a time. This is pretty much to make sure that you can do your edits uh, very cleanly. But if I undo and go to normal speed, you'll notice that it becomes a lot more sensitive. Uh, which is something that comes in very useful later, so we'll touch back on that. Um, so your camera up and down are A and B. Uh, you can't see it but very well, but I'm going up and down. It's very slow, doesn't matter. Um, and then going into the test modes, um, for the sake of showing this off, I will throw down a... Uh, what should we throw down? I think we'll go to weapons spawners weapon trunk um, so now we have a weapon trunk down and now I just need a spawn uh, let's see player spawning player initial so you'll notice now that I have a player initial and uh, when I press select which granted it might be different depending on whatever control schemes you want which if you're looking for how to change your control scheme under your tools option it should be Right here, controller scheme, right under controls. Um, so there is a default, default, alt, legacy, and recruit. Uh, legacy pushes more for Halo 5 original Forge controls, which if you are used to Halo 5, there is really no big difference between, you know, this one and uh, 5. So I just recommend getting used to the one that we currently are like using on default. But if you're looking for something that you know, you're n more new, you can throw in recruit and you can, you know, use that as you wish. But, um, when I press select, you'll notice that my weapon trunk doesn't open, you know, and it's set to, you know, whatever weapon. Um, so we're going to press Y and we're going to go into the object properties here with the little gear. 
um, which can also be accessed via holding X and into object properties. You can even open your object browser here, but because I'm more of a classic forger, I generally do not use that. I just press Y and manually scroll through everything. <clears throat> My throat is given out here. And if we scroll through here in our object properties, you'll notice that uh, apparently the sniper is the static item selection, but it's disabled. Well, we're going to enable that to basically guarantee a sniper here. Um, but because I go into test mode, I don't, I can't access it. That's why when I hold down the button, you'll go into play mode and you'll notice that well, this opens now. And with the other side, we now have our sniper rifle. So this also includes a number of things, which would include weapon racks, weapon trunks, teleporters, equipment dispensers, anything that really engages with the gameplay will be, uh, using the play mode. Uh, this also would inc include scripts, but unfortunately we won't be going over scripts at all in this video. Um, but if you are at all interested in scripts, you have this, when you hold Y, you have this menu here and you want to look at the nope graph. I'm not going to go over it. It's kind of a mess to go over. Might do something in the future. Um, so yeah. Um, so moving down onto my list now, we have our forge menu, as I was saying earlier. You can access this via two different buttons, which this would be X and Y, which originally I think it was just, they were both separate things, but since all menus here from Halo 5 have been kind of unified into one UI, you don't really necessarily have to worry about the split between the two. Uh, going into the game menu, which is just your pause, no big deal, and your action, your actions menu, which is specifically here, which you have your quick save, you have your build menu, and your graph um, so again node graph is all your scripting and your build menu is generally everything that you'll need uh, to pretty much guarantee a map will be selected for uh, um, to be published um, so you'll notice that it's called dirty data and any one of these that are not uh, that still have an exclamation point within the red you have to make sure you build these before you actually publish a map, whether or not that's for testing or anything else, you have to make sure you do this. Um, while this is something that you would definitely get into more if you're, you know, thinking of getting more into the building and, you know, you're actually wanting people to play your maps, these are something that you're most likely going to have to be required to do. Going back into this menu, you also have your quick save. So if I wanted to quick save the map, I hold down, let go of Y. And there you go, my map saved. Now if I hold down X, you'll notice I also have the object browser. And the object browser and the object properties will pretty much just be you know, an object thing that I can interact with. I can scroll through every object that currently exists in the game. Um, I think for the sake of currently, um, we are going to go into the Halo design set. And we're going to go all the way down and we're going to quickly grab walls so if I scroll down enough we will have a wall standard A and you'll notice it has this nice block out texture which I really enjoy and um, depending on how you have your things set up and if you went in and you messed with the tools around too much um, you'll notice that it's probably a little bit wonky um, in terms of how you actually want to um, like move an object around well I'll allow you to give me my personal settings and what I enjoy so if you go all the way up to the top of tool settings and under movement, you want to make sure your direction is set to world. Um, so this will make sure that if you notice the position down at the bottom of the map, I have 21, 4, and stuff like this. Um, this pretty much guarantees that I'm always on the uh, grid. So the grid is very useful in multiple ways, but the more so way would be actually symmetrical maps. Understanding your grid and understanding where blocks are placed pretty much allows you to mirror the other side. So say if I set this down to a 21 or sorry, zero, zero. So currently this is in the middle of literally the entire map. So this is, you know, just by default, the middle of the entire map. But say if I have an object and, you know, I want to line it up, but I want to drag it over. So you'll notice that now it's zero and negative 88. And you're saying, okay, cool. So I want to mirror that on the other side. Now I can pull it the other way and then I can line it up perfectly with 88 and there we go. Everything is perfectly symmetrical. So uh, this 
is pretty much very useful in terms of understanding the world grid. Uh, I generally recommend putting everything on the world grid and it'll make everything much easier. Um, depending on how much you do uh, like duplicate, you'll notice each time you duplicate, now my number goes from 0.00 to 0.01. This is because now it's off the world grid and you have to reset its positioning. Generally, you're always going to be doing that because you're going to be duplicating, which if you hold your duplicate button, you'll notice that I can position this wherever I want. See, now it's over here. So you can duplicate in whichever direction you'd like. Sometimes a bit buggy, but some most of the times it works. Um, so say if that, uh, you know, you have the object direction now granted this is currently bugged I've been trying to do my best with what this is um, but uh, sometimes you'll get it to where it does not really enjoy moving certain directions correctly but you'll notice that with the object movement type that zero one that I used to be able to get rid of by moving on that same axis is now staying this is because it's no longer on the world grid it's on the objects grid so this is good for rocks or any type of you know natural terrain that you're trying to get a specific um, angle out of. Uh, going back into my uh, tools menu, uh, my rotation also of center of mass and my snap. You can set snap to whatever. I like 45. Therefore, uh, when you hold okay, number one, hang on, let me go back to movement. Uh, when you hold your left trigger, it's going to be your movement trigger. So if you want to move it at all, you hold your left trigger and then you press A, B to go down. You move your stick left, right, forward, back to move your block around. Relatively simple. It is worth noting that when you hold down your left trigger, you also have a bunch of options to increase your snap from, you know, if you press right to increase and then uh, to decrease, it also is the left side. But you can also change your movement type here by on D-pad, and you can even ma put your magnets on, which you can see these little white dots that are kind of all over the place in terms of your object. Um, neat thing about magnets, which is very hard to notice, is that magnets are actually uh, cursor based. So if I hover over a magnet, you'll notice that magnet also uh, prioritizes that set said magnet. Um, so very useful. <coughs> Now, uh, let's go over snap real quick because it's also in this menu. Um, I have a one unit snap. Now, what does this do? Uh, for one, I'm going to shrink these down to uh, yeah, five units will do. So you'll notice that I have a five unit block here and I'm going to make sure I uh, am on the world grid. So I'm going to make sure these are on the world grid. There we go. Um, if you want to do any minor editing too, you can come into here and you can edit this as much as you'd like. Generally, I usually only do um, minor, very minor edits in the menu and it's not necessarily required. Um, I want this set to, well, it's five units anyway. Um, so say that I want to kind of make a little like staircase. Well, that's relatively easy with the world grid because now I can just press A once and you'll notice it drops down. And if I just duplicate another one, reset its thing, and then I drop it down again, you'll notice that I'm kind of making just a perfect little staircase uh, with really no hard thing at all. Like it's relatively easy. Um, whether or not you're able to walk up it, it's not going to be able to do it unless you blocker over it which is a story for another time but say if you want a more drastic change um, well that's where the snap comes in um, so the snap is very useful because not only do we have one unit snap but we have two unit snap so you'll notice that this is a two unit snap uh, which I will drag it over and I want to duplicate another one here so we can showcase this um, and then if I set a one unit snap you'll notice that one unit gap here while this is a two unit and this gets even more crazy because you can jump it up to four and that's a four unit gap here um, and then we can also jump it up to an eight unit gap and you know it keeps getting bigger and bigger until you hit 16 and then you have none snap which is just kind of a smooth uh, movement to it but we also have the point one which is often called the Z fighting fix uh, fixer 
um, which generally uh, Z fighting is kind of what you see here with these glitching textures. So say that I don't want these glitching textures, um, I can turn on my precision mode. However, I do that. I'm not playing with audio right now. So you'll notice that I kind of adjust it even according to my position down at the bottom. It's now 0 0.03. And I can even do this with the top too by making sure I just kind of half A and you'll notice that it's a little bit fixed. I do kind of want it more precise. You can adjust it like that too, not that big of a deal. But I like to send it down to one because if you're just throwing blocks together, this is so much easier. So you could just you know, simply do minor adjustments um, via like however you'd like. So like just, it's easy to snap stuff in place. Um, so quickly let's go in here and grab another uh, wall standard. Uh, the next thing would be rotation. Um, so if you hold down the other trigger, you get the rotation and all your settings are also in here. So we'll look at my uh, settings in here. I went over them in a moment ago, but here they are again. I have center of mass, uh, my snap at 45, and I have my type at world. Um, pretty much the same thing within the, t uh, the rotation type. I have the world axis, and then I also have the uh, object axis and the camera axis, which are very different things uh, in terms of what you're wanting. The world will always, of course, go to the world axis of which I've always kind of told. Um, but say if you're working with rocks and you want some really wacky you know, rock placement or something, I would highly recommend turning on your camera axis. Therefore, it rotates via your camera's axis and you can kind of go nuts with it. Now, say if you have like a rotation you don't necessarily want and you accidentally threw this on and you know, you're kind of going all over the place with it um, and you just don't want it in general uh, and, or you just want to reset it. Well, you can hold down the trigger and press Y and it completely resets and you can adjust your snap back to like whatever you need or you know, however you'd like. Um, so you also have a change pivot button, which this changes the setting in here from pivot to origin, or uh, yeah, sorry, center of mass to origin, meaning that this will be the kind of the location that you're scaling from or whatever. This will change your scale, which we will get over soon, um, which is weird because now it scales from here. So you can scale from here now, which is a little funky, um, but we'll get into it later. Um, so you can rotate it via here, so you can make it look like a door. You can rotate via door uh, kind of rotation. Um, and if you're looking to swap your rotation, so say I don't want to rotate it this way or this way, well, now I can rotate it this way when I press X. This used to be just holding the other trigger back in Halo 5, but it was adjusted for the scale feature. Um, and then, of course, we have a rotation type for our D-pad, which is pretty much what we've already gone over. So moving on to the scaling option. Um, so the scaling has less settings, but it's a bit more complex. Um, once again, can be messed around with uh, during the object mode. Uh, so it is worth noting that if you are looking into scripting anything, you will not be able to script or uh, to um, script any blocks that scale. So because the object mode is static, I cannot script this object. But if I want to script it, I have to swap it to dynamic, and pretty much it's a preset. Most items that you will be pulling out can be scaled, but not all of them can be um, have different uh, variants when uh, dynamic. Um, so for example, if I grab this floor here that I was talking about earlier, you'll notice that I can scale it. But when I set it for dynamic, you'll notice it gets a very tiny and I have variants here of which I can adjust um, however I'd like. If you press A on it, you go to huge list and you can select from that list as well. So going on to the scaling, uh, just go into the menu. You'll notice scale only has a snap. It's simple as that. Um, so uh, scaling works very similar to the last two. Um, however, you'll notice that when you hold down the two buttons and you move your stick forward, back, left, right, whichever, you'll notice it just kind of Kind of wacky with it you know it changes all axis of it so you can make it very big or you can make it very small 
you know, it's kind of your choice. So say that I only want this to go left or right, right? So in this case, it'll only be left, and I can scale it to the left. This is done by pressing A when you hold both triggers, and you'll notice that these kind of like areas here get kind of bigger. So from here, you can select whichever you want. You want the uh, moving around your left stick. So say if I want the green one, which is my Y axis, and I want to pull this back down to 15, I can do that. Um, this also, you'll notice that it's kind of like sensitive. And this is kind of the case in terms of you can toggle your position mode and you can adjust it more uh, freely as you wish. And selecting each axis also goes for each and every single one of them. So I'll reposition here and you'll notice that I can now drag it that way or I can pull it back in. But if I want to make it taller, instead use the Z axis with the blue and you can make it as tall as you actually want. There you go. Um, and then scaling also has a bunch of snaps if you'd want to adjust your snap. So for now, we're going to bring it back down. I believe it was like 22, I think, for the wall by default. Um, you can go up to your scaling, and you'll notice that the snap is also exactly the same. So I have 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, none, uh, 0 0.001, and I have all my other snaps. Pretty much you can guarantee that you always have a four unit snap just you know by default so if you just need literally four units you can adjust by four units um, so we're gonna bring this back down to 22 and there we go that's pretty much all that uh, snapping is and I think that just about wraps up the basics tutorial um, pretty simple uh, granted um, if you are new I would highly recommend looking at the scheme actually I've never really looked at the recruit control scheme okay so it is just like OG forge that's cool you can select duplicate du 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 oh, that's so neat all of that is delete no deletes down on d-pad that's why oh yeah I do that for something interesting that's cool so if you're looking for a more OG experience for um, the Forge, you can you're welcome to uh, use recruit. So I think that generally just wraps up about everything with uh, Forge. Um, generally, everything will kind of be over time, and uh, hopefully, I want to do more uh, edit like videos and stuff on it. I do including redoing a bunch of my um, current Splitgate videos, so framing, all that stuff should also be coming back. So if you enjoyed it, you can always like, share, subscribe, do the things. Uh, and if you also just trying to get into Forge or something is in general, uh, I would highly recommend look, taking a look at Halo Infinite. It's a very pretty game when you look at the surface, and it gets very in-depth in terms of wanting to do level design. Um, really my go-to option uh, anything in terms of level design. So, uh, yeah, I guess you can, I guess I'll catch you guys in the next video whenever that is. Adios.